cuisine a la Pierre. Today you may be saying to yourself, Pierre, what is up with your kitchen? And why does your hat look so funny? Well, on today's episode, we are celebrating Halloween. And Pierre is in his Halloween costume. Perhaps you can tell who Pierre is supposed to be. Maybe if we turn down the lights, it will help. Alright, if Pierre comes here and does this... Can you tell who Pierre is supposed to be? Well, what do you think? Of course, Pierre is Linguini from Ratatouille. And on his head is... Remy! Yes, he has the little chef helping him cook today. But this is quite uncomfortable to wear, so we shall take Remy down. And he shall uh, sit here and help us cook today. That is much better. On today's episode, Pierre is going to be making for you his very favorite and special chili soup recipe. You may be saying to yourself, Pierre, chili soup is not Halloween-y. Why aren't you making something more fun? Well, Pierre has some very special memories about this soup from when he was a young teenager. And it has a lot of Halloween sentimental value to Pierre. And Pierre thinks that if you make this soup, you can have some new memories to share with your family as well on Halloween. It's a very easy recipe. It should only take about 15 minutes to throw together. And then you can either cook it in a stock pot or throw it in a crock pot where it can stay up to six hours. And then it is all ready when you either are getting ready to go trick or treating or after you get back. So the recipe is quite simple. It is a rule of one. One pound of ground beef, one can of tomato juice, one can of stewed tomatoes, one can of dark red kidney beans, one can of chili style beans, and then the seasonings to taste is hot sauce, chopped onions, chili powder, and minced garlic. There's no need to have fresh garlic or onions or peppers. This recipe will taste great without having to go to all the cutting effort. Like Pierre said, this is a very easy recipe. So the first thing to do is to brown the ground beef. And for that we are going to use our cast iron skillet. If your cast iron skillet is looking a little worse for wear or is in need of a new seasoning, Check out our cast iron skillet series right up here where we go through the process of maintaining a cast iron pan. For this, we are all ready to go and we will get started. So we will get the burner on. We do not want to turn it all the way up. We want to do about uh, medium high heat. When you're cooking ground beef, you don't want to just turn it on as high as you can to get it brown as quick as you can because you will lose a lot of moisture. Properly cooked ground beef can be as juicy as a nice steak while still being completely cooked all the way through. So you just have to go slow with it. So we shall mash that down a little bit. While well, that is getting warm, we will get started on the pot over here. So it's pretty simple. First we will take the tomato juice and pour it in the pot. Next we will take the chili style beans, gravy and all in there. And next we have the dark red kidney beans, again juice and all. And lastly we have the stewed tomatoes. Now make sure you do not get Italian style stewed tomatoes because those will not taste right. You need just plain stewed tomatoes. Pierre likes these stewed tomatoes better because they have kind of broken down and released some of their flavor already. You may also notice that these are pretty big. And once these cooks and these get soft, we will cut these up in the pot with a spoon. You could do it right now, I suppose, but uh, it's quite messy as Pierre just stained his apron. <laughs> All of that in there. And then, in terms of the seasonings, it is kind of to taste. Uh, and with the seasonings, because they are dry, they will develop more flavor the longer they cook. And so we will start with two tablespoons of the onions. 
but we are going to take some of those and put them in with the ground beef. Because the ground beef needs to get some flavor as well. And the rest we will dump right in the pot. Then we have the garlic, which we will do half a tablespoon of. Again, we will sprinkle some into the meat and the rest in the pot. And then we have half a tablespoon of chili powder. And that will go in the pot as well. No need to put that in with the meat. And then, of course, some salt and pepper. Do a little pepper in the meat. And some salt. And salt is going to help bring out all the flavors. And uh, we can actually get that warming up right now. Now, odds are we're going to add quite a bit more seasoning to that, but that is a good starting point. So you don't really need to measure something out. Just start shaking and, and as you go along every hour or 30 minutes, however long you want to let it cook, give it some taste and, and adjust from there. And then we'll add a little hot sauce. And I recommend putting at least a little bit in, even if you don't like spicy. This will not be so spicy, but the, the vinegar and the other flavors in the hot sauce will add some more flavor to it. And if you want it really spicy, then you can add more or add like the, the plain hot with no flavor, just the plain heat, and then you can make it as spicy as you want. The other thing about this is if you don't get it quite all the way cooked, as Pierre was saying, because you want to make sure that you have a soft meat, uh, it will completely cook in the pot. And like Pierre said, you can definitely put this in the crock pot and uh, let it stew for hours at a time and it will turn out even better than on the stove. Now unfortunately, Pierre forgot that the camera he is using above the stove stops after about 8 minutes. So he missed part of the, the demonstration. But you can see there's some onions and the garlic and salt and pepper in with the meat. And over here we have just given it a stir. While that's finishing up, Pierre likes to drain his beef and wash it off with hot water to get rid of some of the fat. The seasonings that we put on there will still be there for the most part, and the meat has absorbed some of the flavor, so you don't need to worry about that washing off. And so we are getting very close with the ground beef here. And just like that, we are done. And remember how in the cast iron pan, Pierre says that water will not hurt a properly seasoned cast iron pan. So that is okay to wash it off if you have followed the steps in the cast iron series. So a nice hot water rinse to get all that fat off. And I don't know if you can still see this, but uh, see that there's still plenty of seasoning in there. Once that is done, then we will run some cold water to cool it off because for a better chili, you are going to take these big fat uh, hunks like that and we are going to just break them up because they will not pick up all of the chili and tomato flavor and so you don't want to bite into a big uh, hunk of flavorless meat. And so if you break it down into smaller chunks, you will make for a much more flavorful and pleasant chili. Give that a good drain. And so while we're doing this really fast, Pierre will tell you about the chili when he was a child. His sister started it with her friends, and what they would do was Pierre's mother, Mama Pierre, would make chili and then we would invite our friends over. We would eat the chili and then I'll go down to the haunted house in town and have a good Halloween time. And so this chili is right in the heart of Halloween for Pierre. So we should just dump that in with the soup. And now we will switch to a slightly different spoon. And this was 
a spoon that we will use to cut the tomatoes once they are done. So we shall give it a good stir and get the temperature up to medium high heat. If you put it on high, there is a chance you could burn the beans and stuff at the bottom, so we don't want to put it too high. And last but not least, we will put the lid on it. Now this should take about 30 minutes or so to get warm, and at that point we will start tasting, and from there, it will just be a matter of tasting it to your liking. Uh, the main flavors that this chili has is the chili powder. So if it's not tasting a lot of flavor, add more chili powder. It will not increase the spice, but it will increase the flavor. One final thing that Pierre forgot to mention in the list of ingredients is just some plain sugar. And what this does is it counteracts the metallic taste that can come from tomatoes when you cook them. And so, just a little bit, not much, and it won't affect the flavor as sweet, but it will affect the tomatoes to make them taste better. So, we've gotten 30 minutes of cooking time in. We stirred it a couple of times while we were doing this. We'll give it one more quick stir. And so we will give it a little taste. And as you know, Pierre has kind of a sensitive mouth when it comes to heat, so we'll set this aside for a moment. And now it's, you can see that all of the stewed tomatoes are floating, and that means that it is time to cut them up. We're just going to come up on the side here and give them a little chop. It takes just a couple of minutes, but it's not too difficult. And you don't have to do this right at 30 minutes. The longer you wait, the easier it will be to, to cut them, but since we are not going to stew these for terribly long time, we are just going to do it right now because they are floating and my hat keeps hitting the camera, sorry. <laughs> and the whole reason we are, we are spending all this time cutting the stewed tomatoes is just because they are quite big and you don't want a spoonful of nothing but a stewed tomato. Mama Pierre's recipe, she never put in the stewed tomatoes and she only used just the plain chili beans. Uh, but uh, Pierre has, has modified Mama Pierre's recipe just a little bit. And uh, Pierre kind of likes his better. But don't tell... But don't tell Mama Pierre that. That looks pretty good right there. So now we will come over here and give the taste. Okay, that's pretty good, but it needs quite a bit more seasoning. Pierre has never measured out how much seasoning that he normally puts in. So when he did the measurements earlier, that was just a guess. So Pierre will modify those measurements in the official recipe that you can find on Flare Corp Media or in the uh, comment section below. So in terms of chili powder, we need to about double the amount that we put in. There's not a lot of flavor or warmth to eat. We will also add a little more pepper, a little more salt, some more garlic, And just a few more onions. The onion tastes okay. Something like that. And then just a few more dashes of hot sauce. Pierre usually ends up putting about, oh well about <laughs> that much in. At this point you may be saying to yourself, Pierre, now that you've had a taste, how do you rinse out your mouth so that the next time you taste does not have the same flavors in it? Well, Pierre has the perfect thing for that. Yes, Pierre has a glass of red wine. So the glass of red wine, your favorite, will help rinse out your palate and make it ready for the next taste. Mmm. And of course, Kremi, who has been helping us, deserves a little taste right there. Not too much though, he's a lightweight. So after the last seasonings that you saw, we let it simmer for about 10 more minutes to get the flavors worked in. We shall give it one more taste here. Mm. 
Mm, that is pretty good. Yeah. Mm. We've hit just the right flavor profile so that it is ready to serve. And if someone wants it a little spicier or different condiments on it, they can make it taste just a little bit more the way they want it. But otherwise, it is wonderful. So we are all ready to serve. We just take our bowl and a ladle. And make sure you stir it up just a little bit so that we get the, the meaty parts. Now there's nothing left to do but top it the way you want. Pierre likes to do just a little dollop of sour cream, a sprinkling of cheddar jack cheese, and just a little bit of crackers. And Pierre likes these a little bit hotter than some people, so he gives it another couple dashes of the hot sauce. And then you can pair it with some garlic bread, or as we do in Nebraska, we pair it with a cinnamon roll. Don't knock it till you've tried it, it's very good. Come on, let's go eat. All right, Remy and I both have a little bowl. Remy has the smallest spoon that we could find here. What do you think, buddy? We did pretty good, let's give it a taste. Mm. Childhood memories of Halloween are flooding back. Once beer is finished, he is all ready to go to the haunted house. Thank you very much for watching. Pierre hopes you enjoyed seeing a recipe from his childhood that means a lot to him and hopes that you will try it out yourself and make it your own. We're trying something different. If you make any of our recipes yourself, take a picture and share them with us on social media on either Facebook or Twitter. And we may post some of them on our website in the future. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like so that other people can find it. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss out on any more Cuisine a la Pierre. Pierre and Remy hope that you have a wonderful Halloween. And until next time, happy cooking and bon appetit. Mwah. You made me sick to yourself, Pierre. Chili is not Halloweeny. Next, we will take the chili style green bean. Three. Whoa! I need my hat. And the whole reason we are we are spending all this time cutting the stewed tomatoes is just because they are quite big, and you don't want to have a big. Now that you've had the flavor, how'd... So after that last...